Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, then welcome, Caribou. Caribou. My name is Uba. Before I start this video, I want everyone just to stop doing what you're doing and go and subscribe now. because I don't say this enough. Go and subscribe. So in today's video, have you subscribed? Have you? Okay. I don't know. We'll see. This video today is going to be a Q&A with my friend Macy about her experience here in Kenya. So her trip is coming to an end and I just thought it would be nice to do a little recap of all the adventures that she's experienced here in Kenya. So let's start with an introduction. Do you want to introduce yourself to the people? Yes. So hi guys. I know you guys see me on all my videos <laughs> from my travels arriving into Kenya, visiting my lovely friend. So yeah, I'm Macy, I'm from London, uh, also from Amsterdam, so you hear me also speak Dutch. A lot of them are actually commenting saying, am I here in Dutch? <laughs> yes, you guys. Yes, <laughs> so, goeiedag naar andere mensen vanuit Nederland. So yeah, I've been visiting Oba. Um, she convinced me actually to come and visit her in Kenya. My first time traveling to Africa. Um, I am from Somalia background as well, and it's been like, Honestly, I've been thinking of traveling to Africa for the longest time, but never had the courage to do it. I was working for nine years um, as a financial uh, recruiter, headhunter, and decided to take a sabbatical. And you know what? I thought, F it, I'm gonna go and travel to Africa. I'm gonna do this journey for myself and go and visit Oba because I have I know someone there. I do have family in Somalia, but I was like, let me start my East Africa journey, basically. So Love here that. I am. That's lovely vibes. <laughs> so before traveling to Kenya, have you traveled elsewhere? No, literally Kenya has been my first stop and from tomorrow I'm traveling into Ethiopia. So what I mean is like traveled elsewhere in like the world. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. So I'm a traveler. Traveling is my therapy for people just to understand. So I've traveled within Europe um, and I've also traveled to the Middle East. I traveled on a solo trip to Asia, first time to celebrate my 30th. That was scary but amazing and that's why I knew I could do Africa as well. It's close to home, my identity, something that I needed to discover. I speak my language but I just felt like, am I African if I haven't never like, been Experience there? Experienced that yeah, connection. Experienced it, mm -hmm. seen it. I send back home, uh, money back home, I do charity work. And I just felt like, and I've been saying this at work as well, I just needed to do this basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm really grateful for Oba taking this step in her life and being here for now a year, right? It's just been, a, yeah, I've had my one year anniversary literally a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> because of that, of course, it's been the best timing for me to do this basically. I love that for you. So before coming to Kenya, um, yes. what did you know about Kenya? I knew about Kenya, of course, about the safari. Everyone who goes to visit Kenya talks about the safari, the wildlife, and uh, how beautiful it is. I've, met, I've got like Kenyan friends in London as well, but more so, your vlogs helped me a lot. Yeah. Convinced me, made me see it's safe, it's so cosmopolitan city. I'm a cos cosmopolitan girl. Um, it's very well developed, so it just convinced me. Following your journey mm -hmm. made me wanna take that, like, that leap, basically. Okay, have you done your own like research? About yeah, TikTok, my mm -hmm. whole TikTok was full of it, Instagram, um, loads of influencers that I, like, I follow as well that mm -hmm. were like posting about it. I was doing my own like research on YouTube to kind of prepare myself mentally for it, mm -hmm. what to expect, what not to expect. And yeah, and that just like, I'll be very honest, mostly was like your vlogging, knowing someone that I know, mm -hmm. be there, go there, like pack her bags and just move. I yeah. was like, what is all my doing in Kenya? What I need I to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we'll be on the phone, I'm like, I love it here so much. Like, I'm not coming back. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just shocked by it. And I'm like, always like, I need to come. I need to see it from my own eyes. Yeah, yeah. so apart from me, like, influencing you a little bit to come yeah. to Kenya, what else, like, drew you to Kenya? The beauty of the country, I'll be very honest, uh, how beautiful it is, again, how cosmopolitan it is, how well developed it is. I mm -hmm. feel like a lot of it doesn't get shown in national, like our normal TV mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, that definitely has drawn me in, seeing how people are safe to travel through it. Yeah. It was very easy for me to book my travels, to get my visa. Um, I was really nervous, I was really scared because it was a very well, much a self-journey trip. Why well, were you nervous, scared? 
it's Africa. I've never been to the continent. And yeah. I always said to every all my friends who invited me to go to Morocco, Egypt, all of other places, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not going until I go to East Africa first. Period. Yeah. So, um, and honestly, it's just been the best experience ever. I love that for you. Um, also, you see people, they usually, when they come to Kenya, they come here for a few weeks, but you've decided to extend your trip a little bit. Yes. What made you do that? Um, honestly, I just fell in love with Kenya. I just wanted to stay longer. I felt like my time that I dedicated for it mm -hmm. at that time was like three weeks, maybe yeah. a month. And it wasn't enough. And I enjoyed spending time with you. And of course, you know, um, like me and other people as well. Everything had like an influence to it. And I felt like I did not see enough of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of extend my trip. And we, of course, went to the coast. I did like a solo trip. And the more I've been traveling through Kenya, I'm just seeing like, it's still not enough. And I'm definitely coming back, letting you know. <laughs> but definitely bringing my mom, my brothers. And yeah, it's like, it's, there's just so much to do and so much to see. And it's just blowing my mind. Because mm -hmm. I, I would always think like, and seeing always like doing my research on YouTube and everything. You just do the safari, you just do this, or you just go to the coast. Yeah. There is so much to do within Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Like you just travel for an hour you're in somewhere else mm -hmm. and no one would think you're in Kenya or in Africa and you go to the coast again within the from the coast from Mombasa mm -hmm. you travel mm -hmm. and you can get from a ferry or somewhere else like driving again an hour or an hour and a half you're somewhere yeah. else yeah. another beauty so you can like do so, so much, much to offer yeah. absolutely no and I'm, I'm so happy that you got to experience that Thank but you. I do want to know were there any unexpected challenges that you faced during your stay here in Kenya yes so I would definitely say what I found very interesting and sad mm -hmm. is um, the treatments I, I received. So I don't speak Swahili. I'm trying. Sawa, sawa. Pair with me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy. I literally tried. I love languages. Um, beautiful language, by the way, Swahili. Yeah. Um, but I think if I had more time, I think I would have picked it up. And people actually think I look Kenyan or even Ethiopian. Yeah. Um, but I felt like there was mistreatments in certain places and oh, um, like when you go out at like dinner uh, many petty done mm -hmm. certain places that I went to was like high end thinking of course you're paying for the money you're gonna you're get a good treatment you're gonna get good treatment mm -hmm. I'm in Africa because mm -hmm. in London all the nail places are very Asian owned mm -hmm. you already get mistreated as a black person mm -hmm. so being in Nairobi never would I thought I would get mistreated for being who I am and I did. So uh, sadly, I had to take two trips to the nail salon because um, the nails that I got done was biop as well and it wasn't um, as what I expected. I'll be very honest, the amount that I paid for was exactly the same price as in London. Shocking, I know. Um, it's not cheap over there. Yeah, it is not. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get some good shit done, yeah, you can pay, pay the price. <laughs> <laughs> um, but sad, like, interesting to say, like when you go to the town centre, Nairobi town, you actually get really great service even though the area yeah. is a bit scary but the service has been impeccable compared mm -hmm. to this area that i went to that's a very rich area it's called low uh Kabundi or lower kibeti kibeti yes yeah. it's a beautiful salon don't get me wrong the spa and the hammam amazing however the nail salon they don't know jack shit what they're doing <laughs> because i went there to get two nails fixed i was there for two and a half hours yes Two and a half hours. Yeah, and I was shocked when I heard this story. See, we had dinner plans. I was running late. And um, I had two people working on it for two nails. Two nails that I even changed the design for them to make it easier for them. That's insane. And there was a um, non-black person that walked in and the best nail was technician. Was it a white person? Yeah. Just say white person. Yeah, nail technician. <laughs> the best nail technician that I wanted went there instead. And I kept asking, can you not work on my nails because you're good at doing the designs? She's like, I'm so sorry, I've been requested to do that customer. So I even said that to her even when I, before I came, I made sure... So I while she was working on your nails? No, no. She was working on another customer mm -hmm. and I was hoping that she was done mm -hmm. and finished and could come to me. Mm -hmm. And when I saw she was done, I asked her and she goes, I'm so sorry. Oh. She was already requested while she was doing the customer's nails mm -hmm. to come for this other customer that just walked in. So. And I called them from the morning. From the morning to let them know that this has happened. I came a week ago, two nails have broken, 
and I, the amount I paid, I did not expect it to happen. And they said to me, come at 3.30. And I literally walked out of that place at 6 o'clock. That's crazy. And I was seen at 4 o'clock instead of 3.30. And I was there at 3.40. So, and I gave feedback to the manager. They did not listen to me. And they still made the other woman who worked on my other nails, who did it for three and a half hours. First time, I know. <laughs> so I gave her five Three and, and a half hours. hours. Yeah. So buy out. Yeah. Yeah. That's mad. And the design is not exactly the design that I wanted. And I even did one design myself. Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. So she suffered basically at the nail shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, anything other than just that nail experience. And also like, of course, you just realize the moment that they know you're a tourist, mm -hmm. you're getting charged different prices. I've experienced that myself yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. That is something like, you, if you it's don't speak Swahili, 100%. But... And it's sad to see that because you're thinking like you're in Africa, you're mm -hmm. in Kenya, mm -hmm. you know, you're with your black people. Oh, hey, hey. And then you feel at home, and that's how I felt when I yeah. came. I felt really like at ease. Mm -hmm. I saw people that look like me. There's a lot of Somali communities here doing really well, thriving. Everyone's just getting on with each other. I did not get stairs and everything that I usually get from London or Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. So this to happen at the nail salon, and I tried to explain that to them. It hurt. It definitely did hurt. And I told you this. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm so sorry to experience that. I've never gone to that specific nail shop, so. Obviously, that's her experience, but it's sad to see that you're experiencing something like that in a country where you just didn't expect that to happen. But at least it opened your eyes, and mm -hmm. you know, it happens everywhere whether yeah. you're in Africa, whether you're in Europe, it happens. It's a life experience at the end of the day. You just need to be like, you know, ignorant is bliss. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But on a bright tonight, <laughs> can you give me three good things that you love about Kenya? Yes. So, first thing, I love the M-Pesa. Uh -huh. So mind blown by that. Yeah. Why is London not doing this? Why is Amsterdam not doing this? We even had a discussion with someone, didn't yeah. we? Something about the Apple Pay and stuff. The Apple Pay yeah. is equivalent to M-Pesa. But that's more like an American thing. They have Cash App. We don't cash, have cash App, App. maybe. Yeah. Yes. We don't have that. But Apple Pay is not. No, Apple Pay is still you using your phone mm -hmm. to scan it. I'm still paying with certain stuff here with Apple Pay. Yeah. But the whole M-Pesa stuff is just amazing. You just put someone's number in, you know, and you just, whoop, paid. You Super go do your quick. grocery shopping, yeah. clothes shopping, nail shop, like whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. ask for the number, buy goods, book till number, and done, yeah. you know? Super convenient. Yeah. I love it. And it's just like, you're doing this in Africa. It's amazing, you know? They don't even have this in Europe. No. They don't. No, they don't. So that's why I find that's very impressive. Second. Mm. Food. The food. Talk about it. I'm a foodie. Oh, right? Yes. Am I not a foodie? She is. She's as bad as me. You can see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love to cook. I love to eat. I love to go out for dinner. All my friends know that about me. I love to check out restaurants. And yeah. Nairobi has not disappointed me at all. One thing I will tell everyone, if you want to visit Nairobi, wildlife, safari, I get that. With the restaurants. Mm -hmm. The food. Oh, my God. And you can eat. You can eat easily spend cheap money going out for dinner rather than doing food shopping why are you doing food shopping why mm -hmm. do you cook Good yeah that's true yeah you know it's way cheaper than 100 percent you eat what you like uh kenyan food amazing she loves yes Kenyan foods. <laughs> oh delicious it's so cheap do you want somali food it's available mm -hmm. they're here not the best beautiful also, restaurants but, but it's beautiful. available <laughs> restaurants. yeah and then if you want do you want sushi available do you mm -hmm. want thai it's available yeah, any cuisine that you're looking for, it's available here for Would you. Would you ever think of that? L let's be honest. No. Like, you can't find this in Somalia. No! No way. Sushi? No. Where? Where? <laughs> <laughs> they would even be like, what, what is sushi? <laughs> sushi <laughs> had that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You guys, honestly, that is number one. You know, you can eat. And, like, different levels mm -hmm. of, like... High-end, high five-star high end. Yeah. And also, honestly, the ones that I enjoyed the most was the simplest. Yeah, the fried fish with ugali and sukuma. Don't play with it. <laughs> you must see the video. I was very happy. Like, that food is amazing. Oh. We went back every yeah, morning. Mm -hmm. I made it taste it as well. Uh, what did she say? She loved it. She really loved it. But the, the sauce wasn't there. No. I'm like, the sauce is nice. kind of what makes no. it a little bit. Wow. That with the potatoes. Yeah, and guess what, guys? It, we had two fish. Fried, one well, was wet, fried, yeah. potatoes, like massive, I'm talking massive dishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very generous with the portions. Yeah, and we had ugali, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
saying that right. So like my spinach, I think. It's not kale. Was it spinach? Yeah. I thought it was kale when I had it. Well, correct us if we're wrong. I think sukuma is spinach or is it kale? I don't know. But let us know in the comment section. Yeah. Whatever that green uh, stuff was, it was good. <laughs> all of that stuff, plus drinks, mm -hmm. plus like sauces, cond condiments and stuff. All of it came to less than £10. Yes. Yeah. Just under £10. Saying. And we couldn't even finish it. Mm -hmm. So we gave it away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was amazing. Oh my god. Let me uh, let's stop talking about it because I'm hungry. I'm literally getting like <laughs> And the beauty third that I really love is the weather. The weather has been amazing, you know. As much as it's raining season at the moment, the moment I came it's been like like in the in the, uh, in the morning. When did you get here? In September. September, late September. I came mm -hmm. on the 26th, 27th. Mm -hmm. So the weather's lovely, right? We went out, then you really guys nice. saw the videos yeah. and stuff. And in the evening it goes a bit colder for the Kenyans, but for me it's still warm and hot because mm -hmm. I come from London. Yeah. So I was a bit surprised to see them in hoodies and like turtlenecks. I was like, are we not experiencing? Because I'm sweating right now. <laughs> I'm sweating and you're like in a hoodie. Bomber jackets. Bomber jackets. <laughs> I was kept on seeing them. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but yeah. Um, but now, of course, it's raining season. It's been like raining in the morning. It's lovely because you can have a nice little sleep. Mm -hmm. And then like... 11 12 the sun comes out and it's yeah. like like a summer like you know it's like beaming hot weather booming hot yeah and then in the evening woo, the sun goes down and it gets <laughs> cold again but it's been amazing and i love it for someone who comes from europe mm -hmm. i've been loving the weather and of course seeing all all the, like the rain and stuff the rain is different and i've been seeing rainbows it's just honestly very therapeutic i love it the weather 100 percent. that's on third I love that for you. Okay, we're just talking about three good things here in Kenya. Now give me three bad things you've experienced here in Kenya. Three bad things. Mm -hmm. Sad thing that I really found heartbreaking was to see the slums. Mm. It's not even far from here. And yeah. um, seeing that the government's not helping and the way the people are living, the condition that they are, and the roads are very like dark as well when you're driving through an Uber. It's not a lot of street lights. No, yeah. and uh, you can see them crossing and stuff. Um, it's heartbreaking and again a reality check mm -hmm. um, and the beggars and it humbles you as well it 100% humbles mm -hmm. me because you know you see a lot of like on TV like uh, you know but seeing it on your own eyes and stuff mm -hmm. it's different especially when we went also for a walk once it's just like it just grounds you and makes you realise to be grateful for what you have in life um, and, and I find it heartbreaking the fact that the government is not helping them because um, that's what my mind just went to that. I would kept asking my Uber drivers and everyone. I was like, why is the government not helping? Because, you know, Nairobi is such a beautiful country, uh, city and it's so well developed. And the way you see the rich are living and then you see, of course, mm -hmm. where the slums are. Only five to. minutes apart from each other. That's yeah, and then you see the embassies are coming at it back to back. Mm -hmm. It's just, why are they not getting help? And then the beggars as well on the streets. You know, like I said, the weather, rain comes or whatever, they're there, they're begging. You see a, a, a mother, you know, she's also um, handicapped and she has a baby and you're trying to help them. Sometimes you're not allowed to give them any food. So mm -hmm. when I'm going to the grocery shop and I'm trying to give them something, you get told off. Yeah. So it's sad and, and that's... You want to help. You want to help. Of mm -hmm. course you want to help because you want to give the less fortunate uh, something and... As a Muslim person, I'm not going to allow to see them uh, like that as well. And I wish I could do more. I 100% do. And, um, but you can't help everyone. No, and I've can't. been saying that to her from day one. Yeah. yeah. And, and I do my best. Uh, but that is honestly what breaks my heart. And also the safety is the second one. has been a bit uncertain. Mm -hmm. um, I think oh, it was yeah. like a couple of weeks ago where we were on our way home, not far from home. We just walk in yep. where two little boys were begging. We had some food. I was trying to give them the food and I had my phone in, on, my, on my left hand mm -hmm. and they, he literally just went for it. Yeah. And it was just so scary. I quickly kind of like maneuvered away. He jumped on my friend mm -hmm. who had the other two phones. It was just, I literally, my heart came out of my chest. Yeah. We had obviously take away with yeah, us we and we were planning yeah. on giving it to them. Yeah. And while she was going through the food to give to them, they literally tried to snatch our phone. I literally just opened the bag trying to give them the container where the food is in. 
and the guy just went for my phone. Yeah. And uh, the boy actually, he was little, two little boys. Two little, young. Yeah. Younger. And this was like around 10 p.m. It wasn't even that late. No. And it was near the house as well. Yeah. So that's insane. So, very scary experience. Never thought, of course, um, that would happen, but you do hear about it. Mm -hmm. Just to, to be cautious, be safe, don't walk with your phone uh, out. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of stories about that, even when I was doing my research. Um, but never thought, while I'm trying to give some food to two young boys, mm -hmm. to be able to get robbed almost. But on the safety side, we didn't get robbed. We, My friend amazingly fought the Yeah, boys. we were so lucky. We were the guy. Yeah. And he just like chased them away. Yes. If it was just us girls. Oh. I mean, come on now. We don't have to... No, 100%. 100%. 100%. <laughs> he did a great job, honestly. Yeah, no, my cousin... Honestly, was she was surprised. Oh, oh she, he was on top of her. Mm -hmm. Like... You know? And she had my phone and she had her phone. Yeah. So that's crazy. That was like crazy. And of course, like, just the treatment that you get um, as a tourist person for not speaking Swahili. Mm -hmm. uh, would you call that word? The Mzungu prices. Yeah. So this day we still get Mzungu prices. Yeah. <laughs> so much as you say, Sasa. Mambo, Sasa, <laughs> Asante, yeah. whatever. Yeah, you get fucked over. <laughs> you do, you do. Yeah. But it's just something you just have to accept. And yeah. I have accepted it. You know what I mean? If that's how they make their money, I get it. But um, it doesn't feel nice. But it's the culture here. So, yeah. You know? I think, like, if you, like, also go to other countries, I know they try to rip you off. Mm -hmm. It and happens everywhere. Being here for so long, because I always travel for, like, a week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. I've been here now, what, two months? Yeah. It's just sad. Because I'm like... How no. do you think I feel? I've been I know. here over again. I still get treated this way. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah no, I know. I it really just gives you more amp for like, you know, it pushes you to learn the language. 100%. Yeah, you know? 100%. Like, yeah. to learn the language. Because if you learn the language, I 100% say, say this all the time. If you're in a country and you speak the language, you will always get the best treatment. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, people will respect you more. You know, they, you can call them out on their bullshit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we don't speak Swahili, so I, I, they're talking about me shit. I don't know. I'm like, sour, sour, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> sour, <Yeah>. sour. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true. And like, Asante. For but Asante, I don't know, someone said that's so, that's yeah. so true, so you think mm -hmm. the same. Asante. Yeah. But what, we don't even have that, that Kenyan, like, twang to the words, you know? We're like, Asante, <laughs> sour, sour. Literally. <laughs> Asante, like, uh, in Arabic, isn't it? Asan. Uh, it's very similar. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. If I have a bit longer time, because she's really like, good with languages as well. I try. I try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but I told her you need to take some crash course. I am. I am. <laughs> no. You make me proud when you pick me up. I'm gonna time. make a conscious decision to learn Swahili now. I'm gonna teach myself. Guys, comments. Add it. Give her some words. Tips. I beg of you. <laughs> yes. Give us some slang. Like teach. I want to talk like those street people. You yes. Know? Was it, was, was it though? Zizi? Apparently, so we were saying Habana, Habana, as in no. Yeah. But this guy said, no, don't say Habana. That's like how the tourists speak. Yeah. You should say C, mm -hmm. C or something. Yeah, Z or something. Z. 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 Yeah. Instead of Habana. Yeah. So we're learning, we're learning, we're getting there. But apart from that, were there any moments that you can remember where you had like a cultural misunderstanding? I think when we went to Sli. I would definitely find that inter uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. like, it wasn't even with Kenyans, it was actually with my own people. Mm -hmm. um, sleep was overwhelming, uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, I was in bed by 8 p.m. <laughs> that was shocked to me. No, listen, my first day going to sleep, I came home with a headache. <laughs> Literally, I had a headache, I couldn't eat dinner, I was overwhelmed of what I saw. Uh, but yeah, it was like, I think we were like just walking through the shops and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, literally on the roads, there was like an old lady selling some hair bonnets and stuff. I was trying to negotiate with her and I said something about the prices. Mm. She was so pissed off, angry. I uh, spoke to it in Somali and said... Because like, we tried to haggle yeah, a little haggle. bit. Of course, like it's a market, isn't it? You yeah. have to like... Um, but she, she felt disrespected. 100%. And guess what, guys? I was wearing sunglasses, face mask, you know... The appropriate attire. All that was missing was gloves. In it? Literally. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And she already could see through me. Mm -hmm. And I literally, like, I was so scared I just ran off, basically. But I think that's where I would, like, I felt, um, you know, the misunderstanding 100%. Yeah. And Sli is where you just have to mentally prepare yourself and have someone, a local, to help Definitely. you. Definitely. 100%. Mm -hmm. Because you will, you will... And it didn't even only happen with that lady. I think it happened a couple of occasions mm -hmm. where I was trying to buy something. 
it wasn't successful so I definitely hope to have a local person from SLE or you know someone who knows it inside out to help us yeah um, sure just maneuver and to be able to negotiate and have a better experience because I feel more comfortable going to town on mm. my own than yeah. going to sleep on my yeah. own yeah yeah I would 100% mm -hmm. agree because we even took a boater there. Yeah. Um, bought this hair. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful hair. <laughs> Best Buy Lady? Or yes. Uh, Best Buy Lady, yeah. 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 So, uh, which everyone thinks is my own hair, but I wish. <laughs> you know, length, <laughs> inches. Um, but yeah, um, I, I honestly, I would definitely agree with you. I definitely town, right? felt more comfortable in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I went even by myself to town. Yeah, I was Visit. super proud of yeah. that. She did there. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I became a bit of a little local these days. I mean, it's too much. I know, I know. You've you been bouncing. She's been really like, do your thing, you got this, go for it. Yeah, I don't want to baby you and hold your hand everywhere. Yeah. If you're gonna be here for so long, like, go out, explore on yeah. your own. Don't that's be scared. You really get the real 100%. Feel. Don't be scared, mm -hmm. own it, don't show any fear. Mm -hmm. And just literally like be street smart. Yeah, be street smart because you're already doing it. If you're super London, aware you're of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you do that, people will like not bother you. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that. I've been to the Maasai Mar yeah. Mara market by myself. I've been going to um, the malls, village market. Like I've been going out by myself. Mm -hmm. And Uba has been really proud of, my, yeah. Yeah, proud of me. Um, and I've been traveling by myself, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's been honestly like, how do I say that? You feel like, yes. Like you can go on yeah. and more. Okay. You feel it right now. Yeah. yeah, that's the word I was looking for basically. <laughs> Um, I feel I felt like really exhilarating. Mm -hmm. That's exhilarated. What I like. Exhilarated. Uh huh. Kind of really gemessen for my Dutch people. English and Dutch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Somali in there. We have a lot going on in here. Yeah. For people who speak multi languages, I uh -huh. applaud you. <laughs> yeah. So my pronunciation sometimes goes out the window. But yeah, you got you get the gist. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to say like I felt alive. Mm -hmm. I felt like I could take on Nairobi. Who wants to mess with me? There's some moments I do get scared, but yeah. But that is just, that's just human meaning. <laughs> Literally, I walk in, I tell her, but yeah, I did this, you know? Like. I'm like, girl, do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, She's like, what, do you want a balloon? <laughs> Actually, I went to town. Like, right, I do want a balloon. I deserve that balloon. I'm going to lie to you. When I see, like, mm. white people and they're out and about, I'm like, fuck that What's shit. I could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. So 100%. And I'm blending in, you know? So I was like, again, you know? Yeah, everyone always thinks you're Kenyan anyway. Oh, 100%. Do I look like a Kenyan girl? Yeah. She gets it you know. a lot. Yeah. I get a lot. I'm not going to lie, there are East African queens in here. So yeah, we all blend in and we all look alike. Um, but yeah, that I think that was all. Mm, those were three bad things. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've been here for quite some time now, two months. Mm -hmm. So can you compare Kenya to, because you've traveled to Asia, you've traveled to Europe. Can you compare Kenya to Europe, for example? Yeah, in a way, you can kind of compare it to a bit of London, I would definitely say, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, some buildings and like seeing the big four offices, mm -hmm. um, seeing a, a building that looks like the Gherkin and stuff. Mm -hmm. In Western, me, yeah. Um, what, what's it called? Africa. One Africa? One Africa? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've got like the GTC buildings and mm -hmm. stuff and um, going out, the way you're going from like, you know, um, club to club and mm -hmm. all of that stuff in the roads. Um, and the way like you can take a bolt and an Uber, mm -hmm. um, jump on a boda, um, all of that <laughs> stuff that's so available and like Uber Eats, you know, mm -hmm. you have like other uh, food deliveries. It's just so cosmopolitan city like, mm -hmm. it gives me London vibes, it gives me Kuala Lumpur vibes, KL in Malaysia, you know, the way, and it's so multicultural. That is mind blowing for me. Did you expect that though? No. You didn't expect no, that? No, I'm right? not gonna lie to you. I did not expect it. I just thought you were gonna be a bunch of Africans. <laughs> yeah, and I've been seeing people who live here, white, mm -hmm. and like, you know, me and the Indian descendant people that have been here from years ago. Amazing, you know? And they all speak in Swahili, they've got their spots open, the Somali Kenyans. I'm just so mesmerized by how. Uh, we went out to this place where we went for lunch where they were playing this tennis thing. Do you remember? Mm, something paddle. Yeah. No, Queen Delhi. Yeah. It was just, come on. Did we? Yeah. That, I kept saying to you, I don't even feel like I'm in Africa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We were the only but that's the black thing. people, people have these, the workers. this preconceived notion of what Africa is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you thinking that's not 
Like you don't feel like you're in Africa. No. See the whole slums and the poor people, all of that stuff. There's no development to it. Nairobi is it. It's super. And nice. I can't wait to visit all other African countries. Mm -hmm. um, going next to Addis and then Somalia, but I'm just like mesmerized and in awe by Nairobi. But it's I crazy how actually. the media doesn't even portray it to no. be that. No. Like it's only if you come here for yourself and experience it for yourself that you would actually yeah. know what life in Kenya or Nairobi really is about. Yeah. So that's if it's not for the influencers, 100%, mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah. If it wasn't for social media, would we even be able to see this? Nope. No. What is the media showing? Media is so manipula uh, manipulative mm -hmm. and showing what we need to see for you to just be feeling just sorry think Africa, for Africa. Think poor people. Yeah, starvation. when Africa is so well developed. Mm -hmm. Like, look at what's happening in Congo, you know, and look at what we can contribute and give. Western media just wants us to feel disgusted by it feel mm -hmm. sorry for it feel sad about it yeah when it's not the case when really and truly big companies and corporations have like headquarters here like yeah, you know, yeah. big offices here literally the big four are here yeah. I never thought that they're clients of mine and i was like walking around i'm seeing them you know mm -hmm. uh, like microsoft and like yeah. other uh, oracle, oracle yeah you know, emirates like loads of massive mm, pwc pwc mm -hmm. yeah so it's crazy how um the businesses are here. I've met a lot yeah. of uh, people who are here for business meetings, who come here on a regular, uh, who live here, who are based here, who've been here for years. Uh, when you're doing your grocery shopping, you're not seeing only African people. You're seeing multicultural. It feels like you're in London or in in Dubai or in America. Mm -hmm. doing Even the, grocery the shopping. products available at the grocery store. Crazy. You mm -hmm. have everything available. Yeah. Whatever you want to make, it's available. And the way the system works, the way you're ordering your meat, you 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 put a number in, you mm -hmm. get a ticket and um, the way you're doing your grocery shopping, you have a till for 10 items, you have a till for more items, you have a self scan mm -hmm. like you have in Amsterdam and uh, Albert Heijn uh, other certain shops in London, Waitrose where you have a scanner, you scan your own items mm -hmm. have you ever thought that that would be available in Nairobi? Nope, I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy yeah. so Let's talk a little bit about expenses. So before you trip, what were you thinking? Did you think Africa was going to be cheap? Well, Kenya specifically was going to be cheap. I thought it was going to be cheap. Mm -hmm. Dirt cheap. Yeah. And let me tell you, it's not. <laughs> it's shit cheap over here. Baby. No, it is <laughs> expensive. Yeah. Um, I went over my budget, I thought, and definitely, of course, staying longer, but definitely going over my budget because, as you can see, I'm a girl of a uh, lavish lifestyle, <laughs> take cheap shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, and also, of course, like, um, you know, you just want to help people out and, you know, mm -hmm. give tips. Um, uh, my hand is always open um, and that accumulates and, you know, and then you look back on your bank account because, you know, M-Pesa, you be just... Hey, what's your number? What's the bill number? What's the total number? Yeah. <laughs> what you do. <laughs> so, yeah, and then you check your M-Pesa. Yeah, balance is zero, yeah? <laughs> and then you have to convert that uh, money back in and you're like, yeah. That's the problem I had in the beginning. Like, the whole conversion rate. And yeah. it wouldn't, like, I wouldn't deep it. I'd be like, oh, what, 500 shillings? Yeah, yeah. What's oh, thing? Girl, I remember the day, I think you were grocery shopping, you were telling me, cheese, we're from Holland. Girl, we love a good... I just stopped buying apple. cheese because that's too expensive. Yeah. We, me and the cousin had to learn the hard way. But, yeah. um, because I got excited in the beginning. I remember when I was doing the food shop and she was like, girl, I was like, put it back. No, no, no. Don't let me be for now. And then you also, I advise you to download a, a currency converter. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. And when I go grocery shopping, I was doing that. And when I saw the change, when I was doing that change, and I was like, mm -hmm. what? I would never spend that much in London or in Amsterdam. Oh, it's exactly the same though. Pretty much. What do you think so? It is, but certain items are a bit higher, like cheese, for example. Cheese, yeah. Cheese yeah. is definitely more expensive. Here. But someone was saying that there's like a market where they actually like produce the cheese and oh, it's cheaper wow. over there. Okay. I yeah. haven't gone and checked it out for myself. Yeah. Oh, nice yeah. yeah, that would be good because you do like us, us Dutch people, we enjoy cheese. Mm -hmm. um, You're just, paying like, what, nearly 800 shillings for yeah. like four slices of literally, cheese? Literally. Yeah, it's literally five slices in yeah. that pack, 100%, it is gone within it's a day pointless. or two, yeah. depending on how your cravings are for a grilled cheese toasty. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat that every day. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that has definitely been, um, 
yeah, a whole lot. The lot. food, definitely expensive. What yeah. about Airbnb and hotel? Depending on your style, and mm -hmm. at the moment it's been very much like busy. Yeah. I definitely say like um, the rain season helped, but the previous month was very uh, difficult um, to get like a good hotel and Airbnb. Grateful to have a friend here to be able to crash, you know, um, mm -hmm. certain nights and stuff. But to be able to travel through Nairobi and Kenya, you do need to get your own Airbnb and uh, hotels. Certain hotels have good, good like buff, uh, half board or uh, inclusive, and the food is amazing. But if you're getting your Airbnb, you still need to do your food shop. Or mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's cheaper for you to go and eat out. I'll be very honest. 100%. Get your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're better out doing that than doing a food shop. But then again, you need to wash your clothes. You need to have certain stuff available, and that costs money, and mm -hmm. that is not cheap. Yeah. So what did what would you say for a month? Like how much would an Airbnb be? Um, depending on the areas, like Westlands has been said is good for tourists. It has like a nightlife. It has good malls. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nearby to everything. I would definitely recommend Westlands mm -hmm. or Lavington uh, and uh, Kilim was it Kilimani? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and and Parklands as well, of course. Those are all areas that I would say is good, but to be able to find a good Airbnb, you are ranking from for a month, I would say from seven to like a grand mm -hmm. pounds. I'm talking pounds. Yeah. Um, with good security, safety, because you need that as a woman, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, especially leaving your valuables behind. Um, you can find cheaper options. You do. If you do have people living here in networks or you have like uh, travel agents that can help you. But if you're doing it by yourself and you're checking Airbnb out, check the reviews and everything and do your own research about the safety. Mm -hmm. um, but and I, do be careful with booking.com. Oh yeah, fake at yeah. present. Again, that is a big thing here. I've definitely yeah. been ripped off <laughs> through booking.com. <laughs> Would you ever think booking.com? I was yeah. shocked. And I book all my places through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I would definitely say to do your research and you're ranking through that. And to have like, I would say do a hotel apartment or do an Airbnb hotel, you will spend a lot more than that. But sure. it's a lot more safer as well. It's a lot more safer, mm -hmm. 100%. But then again, you do have these apartments that are getting built and have like so much security available yeah. uh, of the way you walk in and check in. They have these scanners and everything, uh, even at the malls and stuff. So I do really enjoy my stay in Westlands, 100%. Mm -hmm. It's been my hotspot for everything. It's a walking distance available for me, getting my hair done, mm -hmm. nails and pedi, get catching an Uber to go to certain places. I'm not spending on Uber literally more than four pounds. And I'm not even yeah. joking. Yeah. And transport in general is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. I've been on a border, guys. I was really scared, but I still had to have Uber with me. Yeah, yeah. I had to force it to get yeah. on much. Like, and I was no. holding on to the driver like this. She had tears right down her cheeks. Literally, I think you guys <laughs> could see the other video. But face my fear, mm -hmm. I did that. I didn't go on a mat matuta? Matatu? Matatu, yeah. yeah. I found it so interesting. Um, but my, I think I will have to work on it next time when I come back. Um, but I've been catching my Ubers, um, they've been really safe, safer than Bolt, I've heard, mm -hmm. um, so I do want to give that advice. Um, and if you're going to take a boat, I'll take it for very short journeys, mm -hmm. don't take mm -hmm. it for long journeys. We've, we did see an accident. Oh yeah, that was the yeah. first time. And they're very um, careless, mm -hmm. so um, short journeys, why not? You're not spending like one pound, you know? It's one pound, right? Like 90 but what would that be? Wow, 50p? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really cheap. Yeah, very cheap. Um, and what else? Um, yeah. So that's it, right? Yeah, transport. Oh, yeah. Like, what about, like, social activities? Because we've gone out quite a lot. We've gone clubbing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Going out for dinner. Uh, we went to the um, art, uh, mark, art exhibition Halloween time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gone to it for events. Everyone has been welcoming. Mm -hmm. Everyone has been lovely. Um, Nairobi, uh, Kenyan people know how to throw parties. They know how to welcome you. Yes. One thing that, again, I want to add that to my three I love, I'll add, make it four. Mm -hmm. The way they're so welcoming, the way they're so attentive, mm -hmm. um, they want to get to know you, um, and they know how to just party basically as well. Oh, they do. Yeah, and they're so artistic. So artistic. Mm -hmm. Like, I hope their talent gets recognized throughout the world. There's so many talented people here. Yeah. I bought nice tote bags, uh, book holders. 
um, you know, and they're jewelry. just really, the, oh my God, the jewelry, the yeah. thing that you started on that. The guy that created my jewelry came from the slums. Cubera. Yes, and the jewelry I've been getting so much compliments on, and mm. I love handmade jewelry. Mm. And honestly, it's been the, that has been on for me beautiful. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Yeah. Talented. Very and their talent talented. needs to be recognized for it, 100%. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you have traveled a lot throughout yeah. Kenya. So were there any specific landmarks or places that have left, I don't know, a lasting memory? Yeah, I think back? it was like recently and it's called, and I keep um, mispronouncing it. What was it? The, mm. um, that I um, The Great Rift Valley? Oh my God, yes. Yeah. That was part of my solo trip, guys. Mm -hmm. I went to Cachado. She went to Cachado as well. Yeah. I went to a place that starts with a K. Again, I'm really bad at names. I oh, was put it up on the screen. Yeah, two hour drive, guys. I went to this called Liriot Lodge mm -hmm. a resort place. And um, if you ever need a switch off, I didn't feel like I was in Kenya. I didn't feel like I was in Africa. Mm -hmm. I felt I was in the French Alps because I went on top of a mountain, could see Kilimanjaro yeah. on one side because I was on the border of Kenya and Tanzania. My balcony, I was just sitting there listening to the birds just embracing that view even when i posted it people were like is that like a microsoft wallpaper i'm dead literally someone <laughs> said that to me and he was like is that like a picture of like the french alps or whatever it, beautiful little cabins mm -hmm. and the service was impeccable they were so attentive checking in the food was delicious i didn't want to come back i kept saying oh well, i wish i could just extend it Aww. but guess what the narrows are finishing Flush, flush. Glass, <laughs> glass. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm definitely coming back. I told them that. Mm -hmm. They do family holidays, solo, couples, 100% couples. They and is it safe? Obviously, it's safe. Like so female, safe, security. Couples. Yeah, there was mm -hmm. so much safety. I went on a hike. Um, I did the whole... Uh, archery. Archery, uh -huh. yes. Wow. First time. Yeah, <laughs> need some practice. But yeah, it was amazing and I highly recommend it. And I think definitely that I will take as my highlight because that beauty, I could never expect it. Aww. It's been in, literally in my brain. And whenever I need, the way I took so many pictures and videos, I didn't get enough of it. I kept taking the same videos, the same pictures. And yeah, I'm taking that with me. And I I'm definitely coming that. back. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't wait to go, go see it for myself. Because yeah. I've seen pictures and it does look breathtaking. Oh. It really does. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to give you guys the details, 100% go. With your partner, yeah. solo, I will literally do it solo. <laughs> Self-care is very important. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend that. And I, also as a family, they have beautiful pools, entertainment, and it's amazing. You're just in a sanctuary. You don't need to leave. Was it expensive? No, no. I went on a half board, and mm -hmm. it was like $140. Mm -hmm. I had breakfast and dinner. They kept checking in on me, even if I didn't arrive. Um, the food was fresh. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Um, honestly, it was it was amazing. I I have literally I keep saying it's amazing. <laughs> no, she kept on raving about it when she got back. I was like, you know what? I need to see it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so happy you got to experience that side of Kenya Thank as well. Know. But apart from that, where else have you visited in Ooh. Kenya? Mombasa, mm -hmm. went to the coast, period. Went to Diani Beach. A. Hey. <laughs> Diani Beach, my favorite. Mm -hmm. Mombasa, interesting. Love the tuk tuks. Interesting to be there. The weather was amazing. Yeah. Mosquitoes love me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should have seen my legs. Disgusting. <laughs> Fresh blood, you know. <laughs> uh, but Diani Beach, 100% coming back. Mm -hmm. I love that beautiful people are very kind even Mombasa but Diani Beach oh. I feel like we didn't because obviously you guys we were there for like four or five days yeah the first day we got there it was late we didn't want to go out yeah and then we went straight to Diani and then on the last day coming back from Diani to Mombasa that Sunday it was on a Sunday we mm. did not know that Mombasa is shut down on a Sunday basically like the Holland Dutch Netherlands yeah. Zumbach, also slow no one was there that. yeah it was sad and we had a whole day to spend there as well. And we had it all planned out, but clearly we didn't do enough research because we would have known. And the whole street food, we missed out. Was her name Khadija? 
I ain't got a clue, but she's like very famous on TikTok and she does like street food and we just like looking forward to like that was yeah, that that my heart. So good. I, from London I found her as well and I kept sending it to mm -hmm. her saying we need to go and see her. But yeah. So initially before coming to Kenya you had like your opinions about Kenya. So now having been here for so long and like just your experiences, has that influenced how you thought of Kenya before? I don't know if that question made any sense to anyone. But you understand that? No, now? I do understand it. It it has it has definitely changed it. It has been um, inspiring. It has been uh, eye awakening. Mm -hmm. um, it made me fall in love with the country that I didn't expect to. Mm -hmm. um, it's been honestly a blessing. I would definitely say that. Um, I've had like so many different uh, emotions, yeah. uh, self journey. Mm -hmm. um, so it a hundred percent it overwent my expectation. I love that. Yeah, I love it. And I didn't expect that. So, so now that your trip is coming to an end, do you feel like you have gotten the full? <laughs> Do you feel like you've gotten a full Kenyan experience or do you feel like you've missed out on some things that you want to experience next time maybe? Um, I feel like I haven't missed out much, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. I, I, I you feel really like to see Kenya 100%, 100%. Uh -huh. and, but I definitely want to come back mm -hmm. and feel like I want to do the Masai Mara properly. That mm -hmm. I want to do definitely really well. Mm -hmm. um, I did see them and stuff but I just want to have that experience mm -hmm. because I feel like it's never done with Kenya. Never yeah. Is. No, there's so much, much to do. Yeah, like the cafe that I went to, where deaf people work at and had brunch there. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, like doing that, that whole concept. The, yeah, that whole amazing. for the diversity and inclusiveness. Like, mm -hmm. you know, neurodivergent, amazing, mind blowing. Yeah, you know, even going out to the other night divergent place that we went to for the sip and paint. Uh huh. You know, yeah. ha doing this. Like, would you ever think that it would be available in Nairobi? They're, no, he they're ahead of it, ahead of it, London, ahead of London, ahead of Amsterdam. They could learn a lot from them. This should be available to London, in my opinion. There is. A, I mean, I haven't heard of a place like this. In I mean, London. neither. That's what I'm saying. I would love yeah. to visit. I would love to support it. Mm -hmm. If there is, again, let us know in the comments. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, on a lighter note, guys, um, are there any Swahili phrases that you've learned? You guys want to know? Okay. Of course, you guys up. keep hearing me say sour, sour, sour. Uh, and of course, Asante. Mm -hmm. um, Karibu. I love that one so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I know. Nakupende. Hey. Nakupende Kenya. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, and um, of course, uh, Apana. Apana. Or Bato mm -hmm. when we were out and traveling. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I knew other words, but my mind is just a bit blank now because I'm on the spot. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Mambo, of course. Mm -hmm. And of course, and keep people say like it's not a Swahili Kenyan thing, but more Tanzanian. Akuna Matata. But I definitely say, let that ring through you. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. No worries. I love that. So, obviously, there's a lot of people that are always messaging me about wanting to come to Kenya. Do you have any advice for those people that are planning on traveling or like moving? Just come. <laughs> um, just come. Don't okay. worry about it. Just do it. Whatever you have in your back of your head is going to get disregarded. Mm -hmm. um, you got this. It's going to be such a beautiful experience, a life changing experience. Um, it's beautiful and why would you not want to experience Kenya? Why not? Do, do I have to tell you again? Just, just check it out. <laughs> check our videos because clearly you guys always say oh, it's out and about. Yes, eating. They're calling me foodie. But you are a foodie girl. I am. I have no shame in my No, food. let's not have shame about that. <laughs> I feel like food is what brings people together. Food makes, you know, you learn about certain cultures. Mm -hmm. So why not? come don't be afraid about it do your research read about it don't look at the what the western tv is telling you check the influencers pages on youtube tiktok instagram check my girl's page out because she's giving you enough details mm -hmm. uh, but yeah just do it yes come over here guys just do it. <laughs> we will welcome you with open arms oh, there you go so if you could sum up your whole trip in three words, yeah. what would they be? Inspiring. Mm -hmm. 
inspirational. That's the same thing. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh wait. Okay. Inspiration. Inspirational. Mm -hmm. Um. Joyful. Um. And beautiful. Oh, that's nice. And simple. beautiful. Just yeah. beautiful. Just honestly simple. That's it. Those three people, words. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Well, all right, guys, that is the end of this video. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so after this trip, she's actually leaving tomorrow, guys. So I wish her all a safe flight if I post it on time. But yeah, she's going to Addis Ababa. Do you want to tell them about your trip? Like what's going on? Yeah, so here? guys, I'm doing an East Africa tour mm -hmm. to go back home. So my first stop was, of course, to see my gal, mm -hmm. uh, Kenya. Yes. And then I'm doing Ethiopia, Addis. And then I'm doing uh, a week and a half there, and then I'm going to go straight to Somalia. Yes, so she's going to Somalia. Going back home for the first time. <laughs> Never been. How insane is that? It's my <laughs> first time being in Africa, and yeah, and I feel like I'm doing it justice. Yeah. And it's been a beautiful journey, and I'm definitely coming back to Kenya. Mm -hmm. Definitely doing other African countries. Um, this is not it for me. And period. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, no, I hope this video was very informative for everyone, really, for that live in Kenya, people that want to come here, visit, move here, whatever it is. I hope this video was informative and I thought it would be really nice just to get her perspective and her point of view of how Kenya is as someone who's never been here and only really been here for a short period of time, even yeah. though it does feel like you've been here for a long I time. Know, it's crazy. I know, I feel like I live here, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people thought I live here the way yeah. I've been around, but this shows you how easy it is to like adapt like yeah adjust. easily adapt yeah you will easily adapt um easily um yeah you just easily feel at home mm -hmm. and it's the people as well that help you and make you navigate and everything mm -hmm. and as much as i know the safety is sometimes a bit scary yeah. i feel like it's scary in london it's scary in amsterdam it's scary everywhere everywhere do you yeah. have to always be on your guard and just make sure you're just alert mm -hmm. but people are very accommodating and helpful as well yeah. just be street smart of course um and just be alert and you you will do you will have the best trip ever absolutely all right guys thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe